Hi there and welcome to the introduction to Goodout's lesson. So basically here we are going to be explaining some basic stuff about Goodout. And to begin with this, I want to clarify that Goodout already has here quite an interesting documentation that you can take a look at. Uh, that explains here how you can go from Unity uh, to Goodout. We will cover the essentials you need to know in this lesson as well as other things that are not here and I recommend you give it a full read after watching this video. So let's first start talking a little bit about some key things that you have to know when going from Unity to Goodout. The first point that we will be discussing is license. In Unity they are uh, proprietary and there is a free license with revenue caps. Basically, this means that once you start earning considerable amount of money, Unity uh, will ask you to pay money, okay, to buy some license, to pay some amount of money. And here we have a key difference with Goodo that is completely free and fully open source with no restrictions. So basically, when you create your own game with Goodo, in spite of the amount of money that you may make with, uh, with the game, Goodo won't take a penny from you, okay? So you will have complete freedom complete property over the game that you create and you will have no restrictions and no caps. Now the second point that we are going to be discussing is OS, the operating system, the export options that both engines provide. Here in terms of Unity, it does provide export for literally most platforms that you can think of. This includes desktop, mobile, web, consoles, XR, legacy platforms, very niche SDKs and much more so it is quite wide over there. In terms of Goodout, it provides support for desktop, mobile, web, consoles in a way and also XR, okay? Uh, the console export it is a little bit difficult in Goodout because it is only available via third party services that is also a paid service, okay? So it is a little bit more difficult and also you have to pay in order to port uh, two consoles, okay? so. Um, if you really want to create games for consoles, uh, you really have to take this in account. Now, the third point that we are going to be uh, discussing uh, is the notable advantages that the both engines provide. In terms of Unity, it provides a mature, battle-tested with billions of player nature. Basically, uh, the Unity engine is huge. It has uh, already uh, been used for a lot of projects in different genres, in different companies, etc. So it was really tested by billions of players and already players are used to uh, playing games that were made with Unity. Then as I was telling you, it does have an already established community because Unity is much older than without, so it does have more years here in the market and therefore uh, Unity was able to position itself as one of the biggest and most of the huge uh, engines in the market. Then Unity provides a massive assets store where you're going to be able to find mostly any asset that you can think of. Uh, the good thing here about the asset store of Unity that you can find both paid assets and free assets of pretty good quality. So even if you don't really have the budget to buy expensive assets, as the Unity asset store is so big, you can actually find pretty good prices or even free assets with a very good quality. And then that in most cases Unity provides more features for more games because the technologies that they use it is a little bit more advanced than the ones that you may find in Goodout. Now in terms of the Goodout engine, it is lightweight and fast. This means that in spite of having maybe not a super powerful PC, you are going to be able to run Goodout uh, and also it's going to be super fast there the workflow because the scripts don't really take a lot of time to compile. You already know that if in Unity you change just one line of code, you will have to wait until the scripts compile if you really want to make any change to your project or if you want to run it. And in Goodout, that doesn't really happen or it is super fast that you don't even notice it. So that is super good. And also, uh, as you can run Goodout in mostly any device, it is also a notable advantage as in Unity, unless you have, let's say, um, a good PC, it's going to be quite difficult for you to run it fast. Then it is completely free and open source. As we were discussing in the license, you're going to be able to have completely a uh, complete uh, property over the games that you create. Um, basically, there is no company behind Goodout. It's owned by the by the community because it is open source. Basically, you can download the code 
uh, that is behind without modify it and do literally anything that you want uh, with without itself uh it also has a rapid a rapidly growing ecosystem in spite in spite of not having a huge community as unity uh may have in the last months in the last years the the growing data without had was just amazing okay so probably in the following months and years without will continue to grow amazingly then it also supports more programming languages it supports a variety of programming languages basically a lot of programming languages okay much more than unity supports basically you have gd script c sharp and c plus plus that are officially supported and there are also some community ports to even rust and other programming languages then uh, the other point that we're going to be discussing is zine system basically unity uses game objects and prefabs and without uses zine tree and nodes allowing scenes, allowing scenes to inherit other scenes so basically i will get over this uh when we actually start using growth so i'm not really going to be talking a lot about this but basically here the zine systems are quite different from each other okay um because the game objects in unity uh, that are in unity are actually called nodes in without and how the the scene is structured and how the hierarchy works it is a little different okay then in terms of the interface of both uh, here we see a picture with where uh, the different windows are located as you can see they are still uh, quite similar uh, to each other basically we do have there the hierarchy that is the scene tree in without on the left the file system is on the left but well in unity it also covers a little bit of the bottom the scene it is a little bit uh, smaller in unity but it's still on the center and, and in without the same thing happens and the inspector is on the right okay and the toolbar at the top so yes, the, the interface, it is quite similar in those terms. Uh, then moving on to uh, programming language, basically without, as I was telling you, uh, supports a ton of programming languages, but it is still recommended to learn the basics of JDScript, and this is what's used in the docs and most projects, but without officially supports C Sharp and C++, and the community has created an official support for Rust and other languages. So the recommended approach is to learn the core JDScript parts and then you can choose to use your favorite language if you want to go that path. And basically, uh, Unity mo mainly uh, just provides support for C Sharp. Um, and then here, other key difference that we have is between uh, prefabs in Unity and scenes in uh, prefabs in Unity and scenes in without. As we saw in the in the Unity project overview, for instantiating a fireball, we had a prefab, but in without we will have a completely separate scene. And then in Unity we have scriptable objects that are called resources in a uh, without. And but well, the way of creating them and how they are used are quite similar in both of them. Now in our part two of the introduction to without, we are actually uh, going to be uh, showcasing the creative project screen in without and the Unity Hub comparing a little bit some key points there and we are also going to show in a little bit without and unity in a completely brand blank project so see you there hi there and welcome to part two in the introduction to without so basically here we are going to be comparing here the project manager a window in both unity and without basically here this would be the window in without and well then we are going to be comparing this in unity that would be basically the unity hub uh, and then we are also going to be seeing uh, how each engine looks in a completely blank project, okay? So basically, uh, the interface of Gidot, it is quite simplistic, minimalistic, and easy for you uh, to understand. We have here two main buttons at the top. Basically, we have here the projects that we uh, already have created. If you have none, well, then uh, any nothing will pop up over here. Then we have here the asset library. Even though the asset library that Gidot provides isn't as huge as the one that we may have in unity it is still does provide uh, some interesting assets and pre-made projects that could be useful you can also here uh take a look at the different uh, categories for example you have already templates uh, for uh, some projects that could be useful for you uh, you have some already made projects that could be useful for you to begin with uh, and also some demos okay um here in the project window, we have here the three main buttons. We have the new project button. Basically here, we're going to be able to create a brand new project when we need to. We give it here the name, the project path. We can here select the renderer. 
uh, as you can see it is quite simplistic and easy uh, so that's one of the main advantages uh, of the good audio okay then in terms of the imports basically here uh, we're going to be able to open any kind of uh, project in good audio. and here this can uh, option will allow us to uh, open all the projects that are inside a certain folder for example we usually as game developers save all of our games in a same folder okay uh, so for example i do have here a folder with all the projects that are related to video and are that are related to tutorials so for example here i do have here four projects so i could select here this folder and these four projects at the same time would be imported okay so basically this scan option will allow you to open or actually to import uh, different projects at the same time that are inside the same folder, okay? Here you can also filter the project by name, okay? And also sort them uh, as you really want, okay? So those are the most basic options. And then here if you select any uh, project, as you can see, these options will be enabled. You're going to be able to edit the project, basically open it and edit it. You are even able to run the project here as you were trying to play it and also uh, to rename it. And here Godot has recently implemented the manage tags functionality. So basically this will allow you to add project tags to your games. So uh, for example here, let's add a tag of completed. Okay, and we have to use here lowercase. So basically here, I do have here my tag and I can have here different tags depending on the different projects that I have. So here, this could be uh, doing and uh, completed doing uh, not completed. Okay, and let's, for example, write it like this. Okay, there we have it. So for example here, I can assign here to this project that this project is currently completed, okay? But on the other hand, I could assign to this one that is currently doing and here that it is sent completed, okay? And then over here, I would also be able to sort them by just using here the tags, as you can see. We can also remove the project if we need to and also remove the missing project. Basically, for example here, I used to have this project, then I deleted it from my disk so this will be marked as a missing project and I will be able to remove all the missing projects with just using this button, okay? Then the Unity Hub, it does have um, different uh, options, okay? So we have here the projects window where all of the projects are going to appear. Then we have the installs. Uh, that obviously we have here the version of Unity that we may have installed. We may even have different um uh, versions of unity and here we also have some subcategories for example if you have some official releases downloaded or some pre-releases downloaded okay so basically here sorting them okay then we have here this learn uh section that basically is full of tutorials uh, that we may use uh and here we have again three sections featured okay that are basically the ones that is like the for you page and then the I recommend it over here well currently it isn't working but well it should recommend you here some learning depending on some stuff that uh, depends on unity learn as you can see that you can visit it over here and here you're going to have the downloaded materials that you may have over here okay and finally here the community you're going to have different tools that Unity provides or that were also provided by the community in order to interact with the community, okay? For example, you have here a direct access to the Unity Asset Store. Uh, you also have here to the blog, discussions, forums, etc. And finally, here you have the download. So maybe if you have here a going a download of Unity or whatever, it is also going to be appearing over there. So let's now go ahead and create a new project in both so in unity you just go here to new project and here you have several templates that you can select if you are just starting out you will probably just select here 2d or 3d but you also have here options to use um different uh, renders okay you have here to uh, universal 2d universal 3d high definition 3d 3 well we do have here some templates that we can use um so basically uh, we can also sort these templates a little bit depending on core or sample, okay? 
uh, because we also have here some samples that we may want to use. And finally, we have some learning here because this is a micro game, for example, that we have here that is already pre-made uh, with some uh, zines, scripts, etc. That well, will just allow us to uh, explore an already created game, okay? But well, here, for example, we can create basically a 2D game over here. We can give it a name. I will just give it uh, the name of uh, 2D test game. We can choose here a location. And then here, you are also going to have here the Unity organization. So basically here, you would have the name of your company, of you yourself as an individual. And here also Unity provides here Unity Cloud. That basically, this is related to gaming services for your project. Um, so basically, we aren't really going to be talking a, a lot about this. So I'm just going to be disabling this because Unity Cloud and Unity Version Control are two different tools that actually would need their own explanations themselves. So here we aren't actually going to go over these options. And here you are basically able to click create the project. You will have to wait and there you will have your project. Here in Unity, it does take several time, let's say, to actually create and open the project. Okay, so really take that in mind, of course. As you can see, even though here the project was already created, it is still comp compiling some things and adding some things. So well, finally, it will end up opening everything. So well, here we we would be with our completely opened a project. And well, here we would be able to do literally anything. Okay. And well, here the processing without, I would say that it is a little bit simpler uh, and more direct. So uh, let's click here, uh, click here, create new project. We will again go into give it a name. I will just give it to the test. Um, Zemba, for example. Then here on the project path, again, you're going to be able to browse, create folder, etc. Okay, so here you do have here this option that is quite handy because basically in the path that you choose, it's going to automatically create their folder for you. So you wouldn't have here to go to browse and here manually create their <clears throat> the folder. So it is quite uh, something that will save you a couple of, of seconds. And here you have the render that will here, as you can see, you don't have the different options. In most cases, just the default render is going to work fine. Uh, so once you have this, let's just clear, uh, click here, create an edit. And you're going to see uh, this amazing thing about Godot that uh, you had it there like four seconds, something like that. And you can see I am here in a completely blank project. Okay, so we will start working with this blank project in Godot in our following class. Let's have the challenge over here. Basically, you will have to download Godot and open a new project and just basically start clicking things around so that you start getting a good feel over it. So now we'll see you in our next class.